So guys, the shoulder is a joint which experiences a lot of instability and a lot of instability injuries. And therefore, an anatomical structure that is super important are the ligaments of the shoulder joint. So let's use our 3D anatomy model to show you all about the ligaments of the shoulder joint. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So here's our 3D anatomy model. Let's go through the ligaments of the shoulder joint. Now, first of all, the shoulder is an incredibly mobile joint. A phrase you'll hear commonly is that the shoulder joint sacrifices stability for mobility, basically meaning that it's not very stable, but that allows us to move our arm in all kinds of positions. Therefore, the ligaments of the shoulder joint are crucially important to helping us maintain the element of stability that it does have. So, in this tutorial, we're going to dive into the glenohumeral ligaments, the coracohumeral ligament, the acromioclavicular ligaments, the coracoclavicular ligaments, and a couple of extras to help us along the way that are also super important. So, let's start off with the glenohumeral ligaments. Now, we have three of these. We have the superior, middle, and inferior glenohumeral ligament, which naturally describes that there is one at the top, most superior, one in the middle, and one at the bottom, the most inferior. Now, these all connect the humerus, or the arm bone, to the glenoid of the scapula, providing stability, especially in the movements of shoulder abduction and external rotation. We'll talk about that in a second. Don't forget, we also have the posterior glenohumeral ligament, exactly the same job, connecting the glenoid to the humerus, just located in a slightly different location. So, when we talk about these ligaments, the most common time that they're going to get injured is with shoulder dislocations. Now, Anterior shoulder dislocations are much more common than posterior shoulder dislocations. And that's why it makes sense that we have so many more glenohumeral ligaments on the front of the shoulder to prevent that anterior dislocation relative to posterior dislocation. And the time that we're going to experience anterior dislocations most commonly is that position of combined abduction and external rotation that we mentioned a second ago. So listen out for this position or this mechanism of, in of injury when your patient describes that they've had a shoulder dislocation. So next, let's talk about the coracohumeral ligament. As you can imagine from the name, this connects the coracoid process of the scapula to the humerus and the proximal humerus in particular. And this ligament is said to play a role in limiting external rotation of the shoulder joint, but we can also see from its position that it may also have a role in preventing excessive superior translation of the humerus relative to the glenoid. So moving on from there, we look at the acromioclavicular ligaments. These stabilize the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and we also have the coracoclavicular ligaments, which have a similar role in stabilizing this AC joint too. So going back to the acromioclavicular ligaments, as we said, we have two of these. We have a superior acromioclavicular ligament and an inferior acromioclavicular ligament, which, as you can imagine from the name, connect the acromion to the clavicle or the collarbone. We then have the coracoclavicular ligaments, as we said, and there are two of these, which are the conoid and trapezoid ligaments. Now, these are super important because they provide that vertical stability. And as we said, they are going to attach the coracoid process to the clavicle. Now, when we do have an ACJ dislocation, it is common that these ligaments will tear and therefore lift that clavicle up superior compared to the coracoid. So therefore, think about that when your patient has an ACJ dislocation. Additionally, we have the coracoacromial ligament. And as we can see, this connects the coracoid process of the scapula to the acromion and therefore also will contribute to ACJ stability. Now, these ligaments are all affected under the umbrella of ACJ injuries, acromioclavicular joint injuries, which can be caused by a trauma or an overload. Now, in terms of a trauma, the most common ones you'll see are when there is a direct force onto the shoulder. So, for example, when someone falls off their bike and lands directly on their ACJ or an indirect force. So, for example, when you fall onto the elbow and therefore the humerus drives upwards and can disrupt the coracoclavicular ligaments. 
Overload injuries. These can potentially happen when someone's in the gym doing uh, some kind of press movement, in particular a bench press, which can sometimes irritate those ligaments. So listen out for those. Generally speaking, ACJ injuries account for approximately 10% of all acute injuries to the shoulder, with separation of the ACJ accounting for approximately 40% of shoulder injuries in athletes. So super common. Finally, we have the transverse humeral ligament, which is a really important ligament to be aware of anatomically, as it is suggested to hold the long head of biceps tendon, as you can see here, within the bicipital groove of the humerus. Now, Interestingly, it's suggested in some sources that this ligament may not actually exist and that it may just be an extension of the subscapularis tendon, as you can see here. And it's also suggested that there are other ligaments such as the coracohumeral ligament and the supraspinatus tendon, which may also play a role in holding that long head of biceps tendon in position. So there you have it guys, those are the major ligaments of the shoulder joint. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. And remember, we've got loads more resources on our Instagram channel, at Clinical Physio, and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid, thank you so much for watching. See you soon, here on Clinical Physio.